Want some ideas for something different, tasty, and healthy for dinner? Check out the Food Corner for videos and downloadable recipes at newstarextra.com forward slash food. I lost Senate race. He yeah. lost. For, does anybody remember? He ran for U.S. Senate. No, they don't remember. They don't remember. <laughs> Tom Coburn. I, I was driving down the road. Tom Coburn. Tulsa, me. On the last Saturday in February, four years ago, I'm driving down the road. Steve Largent calls me Saturday morning. And he said, hey, good news. I had dinner with uh, Coburn last night. He's definitely not running for the Senate. And I'm thinking, I just got elected to the Senate. Because I really, I really think the Republican nominee was going to be, at that time, Brad, Brad Carson. That was Saturday noon. Monday morning, Coburn announces he's running for the Senate. And they had told me before I ran, you're going to be fine unless Tom Coburn runs. If Tom Coburn runs, you're going to have a hard time winning. Tom Coburn in a Republican primary is really hard to beat. So, yeah. anyway. But you know what? I got a card from Coburn a few months ago, handwritten note. Kirk, by now you figured out that you and Dan really run, won our election and Carol and I really lost. So, <laughs> so, so I, I don't regret that outcome. Yeah, there's nothing to be said, you know, for losing, because life goes on. And, and, and the truth is, politics is a tough deal. I had Uncle Ralph told me once, there's three things you should never do in this world. Number one, don't ever try to climb a fence that's leaning towards you. Number two, don't ever try to kiss a girl that's leaning away from you. And number three, was never run for school board or city council, because it's just what too close. Yeah. What was that? that and now I'm chairman of the most problem-ridden school district in the state. <laughs> he's he's violated okay. almost every rule. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, all right. Back to the presidential campaign. I thought John McCain was going to pick Mitt Romney, and I, I, I'm bringing that up because I had a joke yeah, I like to pick on poor Sarah Palin. No, no, I'm going to pick on Mitt Romney. John McCain, I thought, was going to pick on Mitt Romney. I mean, but think about it. John McCain spent five years in a POW camp. Mitt Romney spent five years in a tanning booth. You know, so that's my line about Mitt Romney. I want to get that in. Instead, he picks Sarah Palin. I told you at the time it was a Hail Sarah. You've heard of a Hail Mary? It was a Hail Sarah. It might work. It might be a touchdown. It might be a game changer. We didn't know at the time. Turned out it hadn't worked as well as we wanted to, but I do think she's had a lot to the race. Nothing's worked as well as we wanted to. I mean, Barack Obama yes. has, has run a perfect race for two years. Yep. And, and truth is, most people don't know much about Barack Obama except he's smooth and he looks good. And, and now they're make, trying to make him look presidential. In fact, Mike, you, your your party yep. is spending money to have a 30-minute infomercial on Barack Obama on seven networks last night. Yeah, yeah. Which was smarter money than spending $150,000 for makeup and clothes for Sarah Palin. Oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, no, 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 think about it. Just, just let her be the way she wanted to be, but they tried to change it with Gucci and... What are those other names of clothes I can't even afford to do it? Nor do I know. But, but it's been a heck. I do think she put Tabasco in the race. She kind of heated the whole race up. And I, and I have a daughter. Her name is Sarah. And I look at the world through my daughter's eyes now. So I'm telling you straight out. For Harold Clinton, Sarah Palin, they're very different philosophically. But I'm glad to see both of them in the headlines. Because I think it helps my daughter, you know, and as she grows up, have a better shot of being whatever she I, wants. Gotta, I'm gotta, okay with both of them. I've got to take a diversion because your Tandy Booth story brings up a great okay. Frank Keating story. Okay. And Frank Keating, who may come back and do what? He might run for governor. Okay. There you go. You say he can't do it. I say he can't. Well, we're breaking hey. news right now. It's time. And so at the end of the day, she, she was a cheerleader here at OBU, and we went to a ball game and over there in the old field house. And it's not a very good quality day when your wife's out there bouncing around the floor and you're up in the stands. You know, that's not a good quality day. But anyway, that's when your girlfriend, that's what we did. And uh, so I'm taking her back to the dorm at the, end of, at the end of the day, and I'm chewing her out because I had to buy pizza for three girls instead of one. And finally, fiscal conservative. I didn't plan to do this. And, uh, and I, I said, do you think you'd be ready to marry me next summer? And she didn't say a word. It's dark. It's dark. And, uh, and I said, what would you say? And she goes, Oh, I guess. She had nodded her head yes, but she hadn't said anything. <laughs> We've now been married 36 years, three kids, five grandkids. 
And it all started right out south. There, there you go, folks. Right here. OBU. OBU. He knew where to go. Yeah. A family values Republican. Now, now let me try to compete with that. Susan and I, I met her when I gave the commencement address at the high school where she teaches, the inner city school there in Oklahoma City. You're hitting on a young school teacher. No, no. no. Yeah. yeah, I was. Okay, so, uh, so it is what it is. Politics is, can be fun. I mean, I give speeches for uh, attorney general. And in any event, so we, we get married. Uh, eventually, we got three. Anyway, I like to say I'm competing here to be a family values Democrat. With you, you see. You took her to Hawaii to a convention. Yeah, we did. We got married in a national attorney general's meeting in Hawaii. She had no <laughs> idea. I had to ring and lay away for a year. I wasn't going to tell all that. And I spring it on her at a, at a luau where, where, where I'd had a couple of drinks. And uh, she, she, was, she was sober. You're an OBU, Mike. No, she, I know. I know. My wife, was sober. My wife was sober as a Pop County judge. Okay, okay. And I, my wife was. You should not let a Presbyterian speak on a Baptist campus. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, this will be the last time, I'm sure. We get married. I like to say, I've got marriage figured out. All right? Five three-word phrases every man should use to ensure matrimonial bliss. I'm now, this, what, now, this is one thing you want to write down. The rest of what he says, you're yeah, going to go on. Yeah, exactly. I seven, tend to agree with that. And I, I said, what I'm saying to you, I said at the Rotary Club in downtown Oklahoma City about a year ago, and a guy came up afterwards and said, I didn't get all those. So he thought, he, he thought it serious. Okay, five three-word phrases. Four. Five three-word phrases every man should use to ensure matrimonial bliss. Number one, I love you. Right? We should all say that more often. Okay, number two, you look beautiful. Number three, let's eat out. Okay. okay. Number four, can I help? And number five, the most important of all, it's my fault. Now, if you guys will do that, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, you got a four-word phrase. Yeah, I do. About life. Happy. Happy wife, happy life. I just said it. My thank you. Life. That's right. No, no, I agree with all that. So it all works out. And... Uh, that, that's uh, which which brings us to the selection. No, no, I got one thing. I got a perfect marriage. I don't try to run her life, and I don't try to run mine either. <laughs> now, go ahead, go ahead. I want to get all that. Okay, the selection. I, I told Mark to tell you now. If if you're a Democrat right now, you're just feeling great, okay. And if you're a Republican, you're really kind of depressed. Yeah, I mean, you're like a Oklahoma City Thunder fan after the first game. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. But you know, I told him over there. When Linda Johnson got elected in 64, I was 14 years old. I couldn't vote. I probably could have in some county southeastern Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, right. Ooh. we used to spray for Republicans down there. <laughs> yeah, right. But, what happened? What happened? But I thought we would never recover from Linda Johnson. And the truth is, we paid a terrible price for that mistake. But you know, you know the end of the world. If Barack Obama wins, it's not going to be the end of the world. Now. I told my wife this morning, she said, well, what do you think McCain has any chance to win? Okay. McCain has to win. There, there are some states like Florida. He's behind in all of them. Florida, Georgia, North Carolina. Uh, he's ahead in Indiana. He's got to win that. He's tied in Missouri. He's got to win that. And then he has to win two out of three of Pennsylvania. I said Florida. Well, it's Florida. Yeah, yeah. Pennsylvania, Florida, and uh, Virginia. He has to win two out of three of those to win. Now, could that happen? It's about as likely as Boise State throwing the hook and ladder in the last second against OU and then converting the, you know. Could it happen? Statue of Liberty. It did, didn't it? And it, it could happen, but it's not likely. I, I probably would not bet what's left of your IRA. <laughs> And here so Mike's feeling good. <laughs> feeling He's feeling good. His feeling pretty good. He was a Hillary guy. But. Yeah, for those that don't know, I started off with Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton's been in our home twice, six years ago when she was running for U.S. Senate. More recently, Susan and I hosted Hillary in our home there. Did she come to you when she's mad at Bill or what? what no, 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 no. I'm glad he brought that up because uh, she did call me when she was mad. And she, call, she called me in a uh, personal venue, but Hillary Clinton calls Mike Turpin and said, for God's sakes, what's going on in Oklahoma? I just won the state two to one in the presidential primary. You've raised a million dollars in Oklahoma for Hillary Clinton. We were number one in the whole country per capita in fundraising for Hillary. So she's calling me. I'm the guy heading up the cause for Hillary in Oklahoma. I can take the credit. I can take the blame. She calls. She goes, what's happened? Monday, David Bourne comes out for Barack Obama. Tuesday, Governor Brad Henry comes out for Barack Obama. What in the world's going on? And Mike said, I've got a conference. A press conference today at 2 o'clock, and I'm going to endorse Barack Obama. Yeah, I know. 